Hi, I'm Cisco with Acrobotic and I'm here to share with you another tip for working with your ESP8266 microcontroller. In a previous video, I showed you how to use the Arduino IDE to program the ESP8266 to work as a simple web server. Whenever the web server would receive a request from a web browser, it would respond by sending a simple hello world string written in plain text. Today, I'm going to be using that as a stepping stone so that we can program the ESP8266 to send back a full on web page. In that web page, we'll include a simple button so that we can toggle on and off an LED. The first thing I'm going to need is to download the repository with the code that we used in the previous video. To do that, I go to my repository and click the button clone or download. I'll leave the link in the description of the video. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And I'll save a copy on my desktop that I'm going to call web server underscore HTML. In the file, the first things I'll change are the SSID and password to match my Wi-Fi network. Then I can go to the line that's actually sending the response back to the web browser. And instead of sending a plain text string, I'm going to change it for the world's simplest web page. I'm going to go ahead and save it and connect the board via USB. Remember, you'll need to configure a few things for the next step to work, which I've explained in another video. I'll go through the tools menu, make sure that the right port is selected and also that the correct board, in my case, Node MCU version 1.0 is also selected. I can go ahead and upload the code. And if everything went according to plan, I can open up the serial monitor and use the IP address that my Wi-Fi router assigned to the ESP8266 to make an HTTP request using my web browser. I'll go ahead and inspect this page to actually see what's going on behind the scenes and see that indeed we got the new string as HTML text. So far, so good. But if I want to write a full on web page, writing it in here, as the third parameter of this method might be a little bit inconvenient. So I'm going to create a new variable that I'll name web page. It's going to be a character array. And that's actually going to contain all the HTML code of my page. I'll start with the HTML tags to indicate that it's an HTML document. Then the head tags, as well as the body. And as you can see, that can get pretty messy pretty quickly. One thing to keep in mind while building a web page is how much memory we're using. They can get pretty long. And if we do things like we're doing right now, all of that is gonna go into RAM. So just going really quickly to the data sheet of the ESP8266, we see that the built-in RAM is limited to 50 kilobytes. So if we're using libraries and other things, we're gonna fill that up pretty quickly. So one option we have is to store that variable in flash memory. The ESP8266 has a little bit of built-in flash, but most chips and most boards have an external flash memory chip that ranges from 512 kilobytes all the way up to 16 megabytes.
To make sure that our web page variable is stored in flash memory rather than RAM, we'll simply add the keyword progmem. And one more thing we notice is that if we write a full on web page in between these two double quotes, that can get pretty messy. So one thing we can do is write it as a raw string literal. And I won't go into detail as to what that is, but using the following syntax, we can write our web page as we would in any other document by using new lines to differentiate between different HTML elements. Okay, so if we want our web page to contain a button that we're going to be using for toggling the LED on and off, in the body, we'll add a form element that contains the actual button and it'll just say toggle and the action of that form I'm just going to leave blank for now. If we recall from the previous video we have defined a second route called toggle when that route was accessed it would call upon this function called toggle LED and that function would toggle the actual physical LED on and off, and it would send back an empty response. So the first thing we'll change is the response code to 200, the type to text HTML, and what it's actually going to be sending is the web page we defined earlier. Notice that because we store that variable in flash memory, we're going to change this method to send underscore p. We can go ahead and upload the new code. And if we go back to our browser, we should be able to send a request to that path. See the LED change state and if we press the button again then we toggle it on press it again toggle it off and so forth so there we have it we have a full-on web page a little bit minimal but it's a web page nonetheless that is being sent from the ESP8266 over Wi-Fi to the web browser on my computer that is requesting it a couple of things we can improve on is number one, whenever we press the toggle button, there is a full page refresh that takes place. The second one is that we don't know whether the LED is on or off on the web page. So those two things can be done with ease if we use another piece of code that is going to be built into the web page written in JavaScript. But I'll leave this video as is and take it from that point on my next one. If you enjoy my videos, I encourage you to support the channel by going to my Patreon page. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. Until next time.